Hello, welcome to another petrol blog lockdown video. In this video, I'm going to attempt to explain why I bought a year 2000 Citroen Zara VTS. You've heard the saying, the best things come to those who wait. Well, I waited four years for this to come up. I had a eBay alert up for four years for Citroen Zara VTS. Specifically, I was waiting for a phase one VTS in what I call Claudia Schiffer Yellow, which is actually Helios in Citroen terms. Um, but for four years, the alert came up with nothing. And most of them were post facelift, which I don't think looks as nice. Um, and any pre facelift ones were track cars, cars that were past their prime. Um, and when this one came up, it came up on a Friday night, I was having tea. And um, I can't remember what I was having for tea, that's irrelevant. Probably waffles, bird's eye potato waffles. Um, and it came up and I think within the hour, well, within minutes I'd been on, I'd been emailed, I'd emailed the guy and within an hour I was speaking to the guy. Pretty much did the deal there and then over the phone. Um, so I couldn't be happier. It was exactly the car I wanted, low mileage for 40 odd thousand miles, which is low for one of these. Um, and it sounded perfect. Sad thing was the next day I had a text from the guy saying he changed his mind, probably because I was waxing lyrical so much. He decided that, nah, actually I'm gonna keep it. Um, and as luck would have it, or misfortune, whichever way you put it, a couple of weeks later, the Corrado came up for sale, the style of the last video. So it was actually, well, everything sort of fell into place. If I'd have bought the Zara, I, wouldn't, I couldn't have bought the Corrado. Then within, a couple of days of buying the Corrado or sorting out a deal on the Corrado, I had a text to say he changed his mind and before he puts it on eBay again, would I like it? And here it is. I bought two coupes in the space of, the space of a couple of weeks. Um, like I said before, I have a very understanding wife. For those of you who are unaware of the Zara VTS, it's actually the Citroen Zara Coupe. And as you can see, it's not a coupe in the strictest sense. I mean, we're used now to the Germans calling anything with a sloping roof a coupe, but Citroen were trying really hard to call this a coupe, but it's actually a three-door hatchback. And I think they'd have been better off just calling it a three-door hatchback and not trying to pretend something it wasn't. Because actually, because it's a three-door hatchback, it's surprisingly practical. So it was launched in 1998 with a price tag of around 17 and a half thousand pounds, which I'll come on to again in a second. And it's closely related to the Peugeot 306 GTI 6. Obviously the, the two main differences, one is this is a Citroen, the other one's a Peugeot, and the other one is the fact that this has got a five-speed manual gearbox and the GTI 6 has got a six-speed box, hence, hence the name. This is a year 2000 car, so this is quite a late facelift, sorry, pre-facelift car. Uh, just after this, they changed to the, what I would class as the, the horrible looking Zara. I know this is not particularly pretty Citroen in, in the great scheme of things, and then somebody on Twitter called it the ugliest Citroen ever made, which I think that's a bit harsh, um, but I think they ruined it with the, with the facelift. This is by far the better looking one for me, which is why I spent four years waiting for the right one to come up. I think the interesting thing about this car is that around the turn of the millennium, small coupes were a, were a big thing in the great scheme of things. They, although nowadays they, they're not a popular car at all, Back at the turn of the millennium, you had a pretty good choice of coupes. I've got a list in front of me now, including some of the prices. So if you hear a bit of paper rusting, it's literally me and a screwed up bit of paper. But um, I looked at nine coupes of different standards and different qualities from the year 2000, or March 2000, when this car was, was new. And they range from the Proton Coupe, which was 14,000 pound and featured on Petrol Blog only this week, the four Puma, which I come on to in a second, I'm going to come on to a lot of things in a second. But the four Puma, 1.7, 15 grand. The Megan Coupe, two litre, so the, the best one, 17,500 pound. The Hyundai Coupe, the top of the range, two litre, 17,500 pound. The Zara VTS, 17,500 pound. You can get a really good spec BMW Compact for 18,000 pounds. The 306 GTI 6 cost another thousand pound on top of the Zara, so that was 18,500 pound. But of course, the 306 had better pedigree. Than the Zara VTS. And then you've got a couple of wild cards, or what I would call wild cards, a Toyota Celica, £19,000. And for £20,500, you could buy an Integra Type R. 
and as much as I love the Zara VTS there's a lot of cars in there that in the year 2000 I would have chosen above the Zara VTS most notably the Ford Puma possibly the 306 GTI possibly not because I I've always preferred the Citroen but the Integra Type R for an extra three grand I know it's not in the, strictly in the same league as this or the same sort of sector as this but that's a lot of car for 20 grand and this would have been a really hard sell back in the year 2000 for Citroen dealers if if and when they actually got people into the showroom under the pretense that it's actually a coupe when it's actually just a three-door hatchback it's like I say the salesman would have had to earn their money back in the day so if any Citroen dealers happen to be watching this let me know how you got on because actually I went out in 2001 and I test drove a Ford Puma a brand new Ford Puma and bought one with it on almost on the spot I think within the first roundabout I knew I was going to have the Ford Puma it was, it was just instantly brilliant this one is a bit more of a slow burner um, so you're in the showroom if you like the looks that's a good start I love the looks like I think I said on the fleet video I love the way the rear wheel arch just sort of hugs over the top of the wheel like that quite Citroen-esque it's quite a quite a nod to Citroens of old you can almost imagine the suspension is just sort of hunkering down as it goes to rest I also like the design of the Arlo wheels which are made in Spain speaking of which um, like the ZX three door before it this is actually built in Spain so and actually it's very closely related to the ZX the Zara was based on the same same platform um, but yeah going back to back in the dealership so you you've walked in you've glossed past the fact that the price was quite high although this was at the era where if you if you waited in the showroom long enough Citroen would just wipe off some cash anyway they would discount it heavily Citroen were the past masters at discounting back in the day like I say just sit by the salesman long enough and there'd be a few thousand pound wiped off without even trying but um, as Quentin Wilson said for Top Gear the interior is a sea of grey what do you call it a vista of grey plastic and it's, the lighting's not very good I apologise it's a very sunny day um, there's nothing to write home about I mean I know the Ford Puma was based on the Fiesta and I know the interior was taken straight out of the Fiesta but at least they bothered with some aluminium well plastic aluminium look plastic around the dashboard white dials and the best knob well the best knob outside of a type r i'd say one of the best gear knobs ever this system didn't bother really didn't bother the seats are really good the the seats are surprisingly good they hug you in all the right places but elsewhere it doesn't feel very hot hatch or racy coupe does it really what you found is Citroen had to scrape the scrape the French barrel in search of key selling points or highlights for this kind of trying to pretend that it was as ingenious of Citroens of old um, we'll put this in the boot it might be a bit of shade in there so you've got the it's got the brochure to hand and the, and the spec sheet I mean look at this look at this copy here it's terrible you move closer drink in those liquid body lines steal a glance inside more sensual shapes seats that promise to grip you in all the right places your friends warned you about cars like this all style and no substance they said but how wrong could they be and and, and this was a reasonably well-equipped car I mean air conditioning steering wheel controls for the audio see the auto changer which at the moment is undergoing repair got this piece of class in the, in the era of Apple CarPlay this feels and looks quite primitive and actually look at that it's gone rusty brilliant um, but look at this the information superhighway back in the year 2000 or late 90s was a digital clock which doubles as a in date indicator fantastic and the 16 valve models give you the time of day and the outside temperature too <laughs> I mean but having said that it has got rain sensitive wipers at a day at, in an area when rain sensitive wipers weren't really a thing and look we're, st we're stretching as far as the fact that the rear view mirror adjusts for angle as well as height so however tall you are you get the optimum view ingenious so let's say that you've liked the styling you like the discount that the Citroen man is going to give you and you've looked beyond the gray vista of plastic once you're out on the road again depends how far your test route went and it depends how long you were behind the car behind the wheel because 
It takes a while for this car to get going. At low speed, it feels coarse. The ride quality is no good. In a, in a ZX, the one thing I like about the ZX16 valve is that it's comfortable, but also handles like, well, like a, like a hot hat should handle. Whereas this one, it's got the handling, but the ride quality is shocking almost, or especially around town. It revs high. I, mean, I came back from Woking when I bought it, and on a motorway, it's dreadful because of course of the five-speed box, it's revving its, revving its nuts off. And um, quite an uncomfortable place to be. So if you went down a dual carriageway on a test route for half an hour, or you spent your whole time around town, you'd be wondering or well, you'd be going back to the Ford dealer pretty damn quick. But here's the thing, 90% of the time you could drive this car and not one, wonder what all the fuss is about. But for that 10%, when the road opens up and there's nobody in front of you and the corners are to die for, suddenly this car makes sense. The two liter 16 valve engine is one of the most underrated engines around. We'll say it's rated by people in French car circles, which is why so many of these have been killed in the name of engine transplants, because the engine is a peach. 167 brake horsepower, but it comes in at six and a half thousand revs, which is right at the red line. The red line's 7,000 in this. Then it's fantastic. If you can just keep it on song, it is fantastic. It also makes a wonderful sound, a really, really warty exhaust note. It's a fantastic car. So we're kind of getting to where I why I wanted one of these so badly. Well, firstly, side profile, I absolutely adore the way that this car looks. Nothing to do with Claudia Schiff walking downstairs in her bra, nothing to do with that at all. I just think that is a very sexy looking car and hate me all you like, but I think that's a good looking car. The other thing is, it looks really good with yellow fogs. Slightly different on this one because when I painted the actual fog light lenses, didn't look right. There's something about the way the lenses are finished that the paint didn't work. So I've actually got yellow, yellow bulbs and can't really tell in this light that they are a nice tinge of yellow and it works. I think of all the cars I've got it works best with yellow fogs. Other reasons why I bought it? Well, original number plate, no original number plates front and back, although really annoyingly and it's one of those things that you can't do much about it um, once it's done. But I went in for an MOT one year, yeah, and the rear number plate had been in advisory for a few years because it was looking a bit, a bit ropey. Without asking, the dealer or the um, garage took it upon themselves to rip the um, number plate off, put a new set on with the horrible post-2001 font, and um, chopped the other one in half. So I've had to get these ones made up. Pretty good job but it's really annoying that I haven't got the original plate. These sort of things matter to me because I'm quite a sad person. The, um, the rear dealer sticker faded or got bleached in the sun a long, long time ago. And there's actually a story for that because when I went to pick the car up, I was initially very disappointed because, I don't know if you can tell, probably because, well, here's a reason. If you look to the left of the door, it's a slightly different shade of yellow to the front. The fronts are much more, much darker, much more like the original. And actually you can tell on the spoiler because the spoiler's been resprayed at some point. So you can see the difference is quite, quite telling there. And if I open the tailgate, you can see there where the original paint would be, would have been. When I first saw it, bear in mind I'd already done the deal and I'd already gone up to Woking, which is a good 200 miles on a Sunday with no return train ticket. I was initially disappointed. My heart sank. I thought, oh my God, it's been in a, it's been in the front end. It's been repaired badly, probably. Um, and I was initially really gutted, but I swallowed my, well, I just bought it. I still drove it home because I was still intrigued by the mileage and the fact that it had taken me four years, I just bought it anyway. And when I came back, I did some digging because it soon became clear that all the panels were original. I mean, the fact they had the original plates, speaks volumes. It's got all the original glass, all the original panels. And, and then that bit at the back there where you can see the original paint says, well, that's not, hasn't been resprayed because they just wouldn't have done it that badly. And then why would they have resprayed the, the rear spoiler and nothing else? And then you've got 
the sun bleach roof which is well in the best case i suppose it's patina so i did some digging on the internet found the the original owner's address because i knew that it had been left laid up for quite a few years and i discovered that it was parked up on the driveway of this car in of this house in sussex and it was parked between hedges it was parked next to an xm estate which is another story but the whole of this area the whole of this was covered by hedges privet hedges so the sun could never get to it so this was almost it was head it's all waist height hedgerow all the way but from here it wasn't protected so there's the roof and this side of the car were constantly in the sun for three to four years in the sussex and that's what's happened i believe that's what's happened the bleach the sun has bleached the paintwork which kind of leaves a dilemma really because what well, the good news is the front's now fading as well so it's all becoming it's all becoming one it's kind of almost a tribute to the original color scheme but the problem i've got is what to do with the roof because at some point it's going to have to be treated so do, I, do you match it to the front or do you match it to the back or do you paint it black hello mick jagger what do you do answer on the postcard to the usual address or let me know in the comments what you would do it's even got the original Tatsis cold here and the original Citroen Assured warranty sticker there as well. I think the other thing is, for all of Quentin Wilson's criticisms of the interior, I actually don't mind it, because once you're in it, and then having the time of your life, because your friends warned you about cars like this, it almost becomes irrelevant. So you've got your steering wheel controls for the audio and the nice thing about this i can't won't, i don't know if it might work actually what i like about it, it's a small touch but they don't light up the little lights don't light up unless the radio's on you can just take, just see it illuminated there i think that's a neat touch um rain sensitive wipers as i said and they actually work i've driven on cars I've driven cars in the modern era where rain sensitive wipers are as useful as a chocolate teapot. These ones are good. Um, there's the, you can see we're parked in the sun, it's not strictly accurate. Um, there's your information superhighway, so the date and the time. Really cheap place to put the window controls in the centre of the dash. Constantly going over here to use them. These are your it's worse than a Safran actually, because they don't actually want to open these, these cubbies. There's no way you're going to get a baguette. Well, maybe you would get a baguette down. You'd have to get one of those half size baguettes, fun size baguette. But they're awful. They don't even want to open. And you can see the quality isn't, isn't great. And actually, there are places in here where the quality, well, it's, it's not the best quality. Look, you can see here it's coming apart. And the, and the velour on on the side bolsters is going to go on or certainly on the driver's side at some point so i need to i need to watch them one thing i discovered only only a couple of weeks ago is that the center cubby which is nicely nicely finished is actually a cd holder but while the cd changer holds six cds you only get four so you can fit jesus jones emf oasis and fantasia in your center console but unfortunately, Kate Bush has to go to the glove box. These are the sort of things you have to put up with in a Zara VTS. We'll um, jump in the back. Oh, this is another thing you have to take key out every time because it does that. This is one of the things that is in the Zara's favor is it's a very, very practical coupe. Lots of room in the back. So you can climb in the back, even with my ridiculously gangly and horribly long legs. Loads of room. Yeah, this, my, this driver seat's in my six foot one position and I've got loads of knee room, loads of leg. I'm really comfortable. Um, Quentin Wilson would hate that view. He'd detest it. He'd be having kittens right now. If you saw that view now, it'd be worse than spelling his surname with one L. That's how bad he'd, like, he'd hate that. But loads of headroom in the back, loads of room, properly practical coupe. And the Ritz feel of the lure. Your seatbelts got a little hook to sit in there. Cobwebs there, that's bad, isn't it? And there you've got your rear window open, which on the Megan Coupe, I think, were electric. You could control them from the front, which would be a nice touch because they are quite prone to closing when you're on the move. 
So, um, yeah, one nil to them again in that respect. The other thing is the seats. So people, people who have got Japanese cars or Japanese three doors will know that be quite, some of them can be quite annoying when the seat doesn't go back to its original position. In the Zara, they go back exactly where they were, which small but significant point. Notice it's got rubber mats. They're the rubber mats from the Camry, which I've now found out were from a C15 work van. The Camry's previous owner had a C15 work van. Thank you to Adam White for pointing that out. If you haven't seen his videos already, I'll put a link in the description below. I guess we should fire her up so you can hear the um, the two litre engine in, in action. It's been running, it, well, it's obviously been running for 20 minutes beforehand, so it has warmed up. It does make a really nice sound. I'm annoyed that the um, exhaust isn't in the right place. That exhaust should, should protrude a bit further than there, missus. I got told off in the Mercedes video, quite rightly, for I'm um, not showing the engine bay. So we'll um, open up the engine bay. And there's something else in here which, which puts the Mark 8 Golf to shame. I'll explain all. Look, it's on gas struts. Something you don't get in a brand new Golf. Eat your heart out, Volkswagen. I do apologise, it's looking a bit grubby under here. Um, it will need a clean. So maybe I will do a really boring video on cleaning my my Zara VTS engine bay and um, I think the sound deadening puts me to shame as well so apologies for that but there is the engine with gas struts posh you see gas struts and rain sensitive wipers on the year 2000 Citroen Zara I think I've prattled on enough um, yeah I think I probably have um, I hope you're enjoying these why I bought a such and such video if not tell me and i will disappear back into lockdown never to never to show my face again um what should we do next you've seen the fleet video i'll post a link somewhere up there um, and you can pick a car from there that hasn't been done already and um, i will duly oblige because we've got a three-day weekend so i've got time to do another video and honestly thank you for watching thank you for the recent subscriptions i know a lot of subscriptions have come off the back of the w123 so i know this is going to be a really disappointing video looking at a, a citroen that nobody really wanted at the at new so I certainly don't want to look at now but hey it gives me something to do it gets me out of the house and um yeah thanks for watching stay safe